What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Pokemon Legends Arceus. In the last episode, we finished exploring the Crimson Mirelands with the help of our new pal, Bascu Legion. Well, I say new, but we were pretty much exploiting his new abilities for multiple episodes. But now that we've seen just about every single area that we can access in the Cobalt Coastlands, Crimson Mirelands, and the Obsidian Field Lands, we need to move on to the next area, which is the Corona Highlands. We're going to be doing that today. Now, with me is a couple of new team members. So I've still got Hubert, Roddy, Darko, and Viola with us. But you can also see I've got Bertha here, my Rhydon, my Alpha Rhydon that I caught a little while back. And then Genevieve, the shiny Haunter that we caught in the last episode. We're going to be using both of these, and I'm not going to be evolving either of them immediately. One, because I don't have enough MP to get a link cable to evolve Genevieve anyway. We're going to have to work on that over the course of this and the next several episodes. But also because I want to fill out their Pokedex entries, they're not quite complete. I think Genevieve's at like level 7 and Bertha's at level 8. Now Bertha, I do have a protector on hand that I've gotten in one of the uh, one of the time space or space time areas or whatever. I'm sure I picked one up at some point. It was sitting in my box, but we we have that on hand, but we're going to keep Bertha as a ride on at least for the time being. And they're going to be doing most of the heavy lifting in this area that we're going to because well, they need the most work. So, I'm going to actually move Bertha on up here and we're going to be heading out. Uh this is going to be a little bit interesting the Corona Highland. So, I'm not a huge fan of this area. I want to say that right off the bat. This is one of my this is probably my least favorite area in the entire game. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a different approach with this one. Also for other reasons. It'll make sense once we get here. You'll see what I mean. But this is it. This is the Corona at Highlands. Now, visually and aesthetically, it's not my least favorite. No, not at all. That, that's not why I dislike this area so much. It'll make sense in due time. But we meet up with Laventon. There you are, my girl. Welcome to the Coronet Highlands. I expect you'll find all sorts of rock-type and ground-type Pokemon wandering about these craggy, boulder-strewn boulder heights. And up there, right beneath that great rift in space-time, is the peak of Mount Corona itself. The magnetism from it may well exert some sort of influence on the Pokemon throughout the area. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating indeed! Okay, so we are supposed to go and meet up with Ingo, who is down that way a little bit. They're at the entrance of a cave. We're going to be doing a little bit of exploring around beyond this camp because there's a couple things I want to check out. Now, first things first, I am going to make a very... I'm going to make a make a point of grabbing a lot of things, a lot of items as we go through the Cronut Highlands in this time in particular. Just grabbing all that I can, particularly apricorns and tumblestones and things like that because I need a lot of these. We're going to head up this way first because it just dead ends really early on. It'll allow me to show what we can find up here, which isn't much. Uh, there's Yen Mega and some Yanma down there, which I think that'll actually be perfect for right on to fight because part of maxing out the or reaching lo research level 10 with right on is getting uh, or taking Pokemon out with Rock Slide as well as using strong style moves. So going up against some bug flying types would be a very good idea. There's also a few other things I need to be on the lookout for while I'm out here, particularly crunchy salt, which can be gotten in this area, and that is necessary for increasing the uh, increasing the size and the inventory of the the shop back in Jubilife Village. So let's start with just a strong style rock slide that should definitely take this Yan Mega out with no issue, and I might as well go might as well go after all of the Yanma around it really quickly so we're gonna be doing all sorts of little things catching basically every new Pokemon that we can find in here and I also need to be make a point of going after satchels as well because I'm sure there's plenty of those out here now, I'm not too worried about Yanma trying to hurt although that actually did a fair bit of damage it was a crit so I guess that makes sense but geez that was actually quite a bit it's okay we'll be evolving Bertha pretty darn soon here like really really soon and actually it just turned nighttime, so all the Yanma are gone now. So we'll uh, we'll head down there in a second. Well, actually, uh, it, it kind of works both ways. That's the problem is it is there is like a path down here, and there's a bunch of those stuff, but there's also a path as that flies away. Um, and oh no, you know what? I don't want to hit that tumble stone because it's shaking. So we'll skip that one. Um, there's also a path over here though, and if I'm not mistaken. If I can actually look at the map here, there is... Yep, there's a satchel, like, right here. Maven satchel. We'll, like, vaguely mark that as we head back over this way. Now that it's all dark out. But... Uh, oh, oh, hold on. I probably should grab... I just had a thing. Give me the... Let me grab them, please. Thank you. Iron Bark Tongue. 
I definitely want that. Okay, we got Luxray over here. Now, this actually would be a good Pokemon to fight with Bertha. We can use high horsepower on this thing. Help us out quite a bit. We only need to take on one at a time. But it's some good experience. So, oh, no, I didn't mean to hit that. Excuse me. Fat fingering everything because even the Pro Controller is too small for my giant meaty hands. That you will hear me complain about multiple times. We also got a bunch of Parasect out here too, so I got to be wary of those. But yeah, I'm grabbing all sorts of just things around here because I definitely want to have a lot of crafting materials. The more I can get, the better. We also have Golbat out here, which that is also good for right on to take out. So I love how that Parasect decided it wanted to... Attack me right in the middle of this. That's not going to really work out so well. Let's use another strong style rock slide here. As we continue to... Because I think Birth is only two levels away from... Yeah, yeah. I'm almost positive she's at level 10. And in fact, I can check her data here. Let's see. Uh, I just need to report... Okay, so two more uses of rock slide should do it. And then we'll be good to go. Which there are two Golbat right here. So we might as well get that out of the way. So, the approach that I'm going to be taking here in the Coronet Highlands is we're going to be kind of hurrying along to the location of the Lord of the Highlands because this, this entire area is really weird with its accessibility. You do need the Pokemon here that, you know, the, you're obviously you're going to get yourself another partner Pokemon in the area. That's just a given. It's kind of been the case with every area. Um, you're going to be getting one here, and you really do need it to move around, obviously, much like you did in the Cobalt Coastlands. But in the grand scheme of things, even once you have access to that, this area is really small. Like, really small. Um, I would actually wager to say that it's the smallest area in the game, even smaller than the Obsidian Fieldlands. It, sure, it certainly feels that way. Because once you start traversing around, you will come to realize that so much of the space in this area is completely wasted. And it, again, it'll make sense in due time. It's, it's a little bit confusing. Where did I grab the... Hold on. The... I want the satchel. Where is it at? Is it up here or is it down there some more? I actually can't tell. Oh, it's down there. Okay, I see it. Okay, well, we'll get down to it, and in fact, I can use kind of Weird Ear here and just jump down. I think if I fell on my own, it would be a little bit risky to do that. Um, did we... We did max that out, so now we can evolve uh, Bertha, which we'll, we'll do soon enough. We will. But I'm going to grab that from you, and I'm going to grab that, and then we need to get across here really quickly. And head uh oh oh no 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 Basque Legion, you need to jump. There you go. And let's start breaking all these and grabbing this wisp and all sorts of stuff. Luckily the Pokemon respect you whenever you decide to go grab a wisp, they're willing to give you a little bit of space. And I want to be grabbing pep up plants and all this stuff. This is all necessary. Berries are pretty much the only thing I'm kinda like, eh! I don't know if I really need them. Like, I'll take Orin Berries for sure, but the other kinds, I don't know about that. So, be good to have those. And I think we don't need anything over in that direction. Um, what I can do, though, is if I head over this way, I can take Basque Legion around here and hop up this way. Grab an Iron Chunk, and we can kind of follow this path. There is another Pokemon here, but I don't want to fight you. I just want that tumble stone. And then if I continue to follow this path, there is a king's leaf here as well as some soot foot roots, which I actually do. Oh, well, let's see if I can make that jump again. Uh, yeah, I do want that so I can make more smoke bombs. I'm actually really low on money. I spent basically all of my money off screen uh, just kind of getting things ready. Now, can we go all the way around here? I think we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Now, there is this little secluded area over here. That you can get to with Basque Legion or the new po uh, Pokemon partner in this area. Again, it'll make sense in due time. And you actually have Goldux over here, which is interesting. I want to say there's a Pokemon over here that's exclusive to this area. But I can't remember. Are those No, nope, those aren't Apricorns. I probably shouldn't have gotten those. Oh, well. I'm going to have to be very careful with inventory management here. As we just kind of grab everything we can find. And there's more King Leaf. Those are Apricorns. I think that guy there I do want to talk to. 
So let me check. Because, yeah, I think... I, I really do truly think we are going to probably be... Um, we are probably going to be done, at least with the story aspect of this area, in like two more episodes. I'm not even kidding when I say that. All right, let's talk to this galaxy member. Most admirable of you to find such a remote corner of the Highlands. Your choice of path shows a certain kind of single-minded dedication. I have a recipe for, perfectly suited for someone like yourself. Here, I hope you'll give it a try. And we get a recipe for crafting choice dumplings. You can see it requires all sorts of stuff. Castor fern leaves, dire shrooms, sword caps, stalks of hardy grains. All sorts of weird and wild stuff. But we'll, we'll have to make one of those at some point. I actually don't even remember what those do off the top of my head. That's going to be something that someone in the comments is going to have to remind me of. Because I don't... I've, I've crafted them before. It's just I don't think I like ever use them. So I honestly don't remember what it, what it does. I'm totally drawing a blank on that. But it is a really expensive cost, so I would assume, I mean, by all rights, it would be something really amazing, and the fact that I can't remember leads me to believe that it wasn't actually all that good, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just jumping to conclusions here. All right, let's head back on over to where Ingo's at. And actually, before I do that, I should turn in the one satchel that I had. Let's see if I can get some merit points out of that. Cool. Let's see. We got four of them in Corona Highlands. Right, do, is it four? No, that's Obsidian. Yeah, three in Corona Highlands. They're all Norm. Who the frick? Norm? Well, who's this Norm guy losing all of his freaking satchels? Man, he had a bad time around here. This isn't that difficult of an area. I shouldn't say that, though, because there are actually sections of Corona Highlands that might as well be completely endgame areas. Uh, it, it gets pretty rough in certain uh, sections of here. We're not near those sections just yet, but trust me when I do say that there are going to be some sections that are going to kick your butt if you want wander un into them unintentionally. All right, we got a Graveler here. Uh, I think I'm actually supposed to be taking these things out with fighting moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on over to Darko here really quickly. And Darko can Drain Punch this thing a few times. I love how they're, like, so close to each other. Yeah, please back up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe you can one-shot that? Yeah. Graveler's defenses just aren't strong enough. So that's that works out in my favor. And, hey, we got Dawnstone, Sky Tumblestone, and regular Tumblestones. Not bad. I don't think I've gotten a, a Dawnstone yet in the game. So I will happily take that. All right, let's talk to Ingo. The electrode known as the Lord of the Hollow is somewhat different from the electrode I recall, but its electrical discharges at least are familiar. One false step around it could put you in danger. If you're going to face it, you might consider catching a Pokemon that can withstand electricity. I have one of those, actually. It must be difficult being a Pokemon, don't you think? Especially one as irritable as Electrode. Then becoming frenzied to boot? So true! It's a tough old life for Pokemon and humans alike! Well, well, Warden Ingo of the Pearl Clan, and oh my, the Galaxy Team Grunt from before! You're punching well above your weight to seek out the Great Electrode Lord of the Hollow. But by the sheer tenderness of my heart, I'll grant you a trial to see if you're worthy. The greatest obstacle you'll ever face awaits you right here. Battle me, if you dare. Absolutely not. <laughs> hmm. Well, let me tell you Great Melly's take on this whole situation. The frenzy of our nobles is nothing other than a mark of Almighty, Sinno, uh, Almighty Sinnoh's favor and protection. Why? Because it makes them stronger. Do I really need to spell out that that's a good thing? We must let my lord frenzy as it may, to demonstrate to Almighty Sinnoh that the Diamond Clan lives as his right and good. This may even be, dare I say it, the very reason I am here on this earth. What business is it of galaxy teams anyway if Electrode lets loose a few sparks out here in the mountains? Really, you should do all, us all a favor and slink back home to that village of yours rather than persist in this folly. And with that, bon voyage. That character is insufferable. I cannot stand this character. And I feel like, and we're going to press on, I feel like almost everyone else has that sentiment. Melly is like the worst character in Pokemon history. <laughs> like irredeemably obnoxious. It's not even just an act or a character. It's just terrible. Okay, let's head on into Wayward Cave. They are. He is? I don't actually know. I don't think they, I don't think Melly has gendered pronouns in this. So I, I don't, I don't want to jump to conclusions. I, I meant just the character in general is terrible. Well, this is odd. The torches that light the way through the cave are gone. Could this be a melee attempt to obstruct us? Either way, there's no need for concern. I know my route, and I'll conduct us safely. Get it? Conduct, because he's a conduct. Anyway. Take care not to come for uncouple from me. So we can't run here. We have to just kind of slowly follow. And the aliasing is, like, really bad around Ingo and 
my character in the dark. I can't tell if it's like that on the capture. Like, I can see snippets of it on my character's legs. But on the TV, it's, like, all around the character model. It's really bad. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to show up really well. Hopefully not. What do we got, Ingo? Did you find something? Please forget the unscheduled stop. I detect an alpha crowbat to our right. Under normal circumstances, I doubt its presence would obstruct someone as, so as competent as you. But given the poor visibility, I propose a track change in interest of safety. Please follow me. All right. So let's keep going. And there's a rock we can actually break. Starting to recall a man who looked like me. We'd battle and discuss Pokemon, I think. The words, I like winning more than anything else, flashed through my mind just now. We'll soon be arriving at Wayward Cave's exit. Even if the memories themselves have faded, it appears much still lives on in my heart. Are we there yet? This, fi this is fine progress. We're nearly home free. Wait, could those be? Hey, there they are. The aliasing on those is even worse. Wow. It's like straight up an outline. Let me put those torches back where they belong. The darkness could be perilous for the next person to pass through here. Goodness me. I beg your pardon for the delay. I've lit and returned the torches. My safety concerns have been addressed. Ready for departure. And off Ingo goes. Okay, so that allows us to actually start exploring the cave a little bit, which we're going to do to kind of cap off this episode. So really quickly, I'm going to grab a ton of stumbles, tumble stones in here. Uh, I For a second there, I actually thought that one was shaking, but it is not. We're going to try to crack, uh, track down that crowbat and actually try to take it out for the sake of some experience, because I think that would actually be nice to have. Um, I do know where it's at. Also, that I definitely want. Let's uh, pull out wing balls here. And apparently I was too far out for that. I probably should have gotten closer. Gosh dang it. Alright, well, I definitely want to catch that gibble. I want to say that thing is actually at a pretty high level too. Like, have high enough that we can like instantly evolve it into a gabite. You know what I might do here? So I'm going to throw a smoke bomb. And then I'm going to get back up and wing ball this thing. What? Okay. Frickin' I hate the that's the other thing I hate about wing balls is the frickin' hitbox interactions with the rock face and really anything that you're next to. Come on. Oh my gosh, turn around. It's not turning around. That smoke bomb's gonna dissipate soon. Uh, yeah, it's still looking my way. Okay. Fine, that was a waste. Come on, Gibble, turn around. I beg of you. That's that's not turning around. That's like a 90 degree turn. Please. Be a deer. That's also why I'm trying to grab these sky tumble stones so I can make more of these things. This thing is just not cooperating. Nope. And then that is apparently out of its range. What in the... Dude, I hate that. I hate that. My goodness. I'm probably just going to do this the old fashioned way. I don't want to scare it off though. That's the thing. And get it to run away. I think it did throw an attack at me. <laughs> Hold on a moment. Okay. Now, let me try to get back into position. It, you know, probably just using a lead in ball with a smoke bomb combo would be like the best approach here. Oh, he's right there. Hold on. Let me do that. Let's see. Then another one. Get really freaking close. Oh, it wasn't enough. Come on. There it is. Okay, that should definitely catch it. Please? Thank you. Level 23. Okay, never mind. That's not nearly as high a level as I thought it was for some reason. I, I was under the impression it was in like the 50s or something like that, but that is completely incorrect, and I apologize for assuming such. Okay, I want to go back this way. The crowbot, uh, crowbat is not in the area that we left it in. It's like completely gone. In fact, if you see we go this way where it was at, it's just completely moved on. I know where it is, um, and we'll head on over that way, actually, right now. So if we go down here, there is a bar boach here, and then I think there's a whisk cache further down, which I am going to take this thing on just to get it out of my way so it doesn't bother me while I'm trying to get an angle on this uh, crowbat. So let's do that. I'm also sure that damn, taking it out is going to be good for the Pokedex. There we go. With grass type moves. Okay. This is going to be a lot of fun trying to do this. And I am also going to heal Bertha really quickly. You know, probably it would be in my best interest to evolve Bertha now. So let's just do that. 
she will be able to tank a lot more damage from this Crobat. Because while it doesn't have any super effective moves, it is still going to hit really hard with things like Air Slash. So having a Rhyperior be a lot more conducive to this. So here we go. Okay, and this will probably be the last thing I do. Well, I mean, we'll finish off the cave. There's really not much left going on in the cave. Okay, you. Let me throw another Spoke Bomb. As I let you... Oh, you are not seeing me. Turn around. Come on. Oh, I guess I wasn't crouching all the way. There we go. Perfect. Okay, this should do it. So, we'll use Rock Slide just a few times, including a... Maybe I can get... No, I can't get an, al an Agile style in, so I'm going to have to tank at least one hit. Please land it, though. Thank you. And then a single Strong Style should seal the deal. So it's going to use Agile style to attack twice. Oh, or it could do that. That's annoying. Oh, you suck. So it only has the Drowsy status. Gosh dang it. Okay, at least it's not very effective. Well, I only have two uses of this. I could try to get away with a Thunder Punch here. But I don't know if that's going to work out too well. Let's just try another Rock Slide. Come on. There we go. It's a little better. Another Air Slash. And I'm guessing it's going to use Rest again. What is it? Yes! Wow, that's obnoxious. Okay. Come on, Bertha. You can hang in there. I believe in you. Too drowsy to move. Well, thank goodness we got that. Okay, let's try... No, Agile Style still isn't messing with my action order here. So let's try Thunder Punch. Hey, that's not bad damage. Too drowsy to move. All right, let's finish it off. And there we go. That'll be some good experience. And then also maybe an Experience Candy L. I will take that. I'm also going to grab this Wisp over here before I forget about it. So pardon me. And then we'll head out of this cave. We're really like right on the cusp of getting out of here. So just bear with me. I also need to be grabbing these iron chunks because they are good for making the better types of Pokeballs. So let's just kind of use Weird Ear to get out of here. You honestly get so much more bang for your buck hitting the sparkling uh, tumblestone rocks than you do for actually picking up the iron chunks. All right, this is the exit right here, and we're going to be heading out of there in the next episode, guys. But thank you all so very much for watching this one. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much. The next episode, we will continue probably off to the next camp in the area. I, I believe we should be able to get there in the next episode. And I'm going to try to use Genevieve a little bit more, even though she's not as equipped for all of this as Bertha, but I'll also give her an experience candy L to make her life a little bit easier. So thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.